My name is Caroline Geyer, and I'm a leather worker who specializes in making theatrical costume leather masks. And I live in beautiful Key Largo, Florida, in the Florida Keys. It was clear from the beginning that whatever kind of uh, creative artistic aesthetic is in my head translates well into a leather mask. I love studying the animal faces. You know, I like looking at animals, so I'm happy to, to study them and see if I can make a mask. And at the same time, that is what people seem to want more and more of. I'll never forget a customer asking me to do a rabbit and, you know, struggling with it at first, trying to figure out how to do these animal faces. And I did the rabbit and people loved it. There seems to be like a, a creepy rabbit mask thing that's almost like a, like a modern archetypal collective unconscious kind of thing where people really respond to creepy white rabbit masks over and over again, regardless of what movie they've been in. They're in movies again and again and again. So I find that is something that kind of persists year after year. And then, um, of course, wolves are always popular. And then I'll have people that'll be like, oh, can you do one of my dog? I have people who wear them, people who hang them on the walls, and then people who do both. will just leave them on the wall until they have a masquerade event to go to. But I certainly sell to people who are only gonna wear them and people who are only gonna hang them on the wall. I create the masks entirely by hand. If I have an idea of a mask that I want to make and I don't have a pattern yet for it, and over 20 years I've got hundreds of patterns, I'll research the design and create a pattern. And then I trace that onto the piece of leather, cut it out with a blade, and then I wet that piece of leather, blot it dry, and then I wait until the leather gets to just the right point for it to be molded. And that varies from piece of leather to piece of leather and also depending on the humidity in the, in the air, stuff like that. When it, the leather is at the right point to be molded, I sit there and I mold it all by hand. And then I set that on the floor or on a towel or something, let it dry overnight. Most masks I'll do an airbrush base. So I go outside and I airbrush the base on. And then after that's dry, I buff it up a little bit and I add some detail hand painting with acrylic paints. And then when that's dry, I brush on an acrylic sealer. And when that's dry, I sand the back so it's comfortable. I add some felt padding if that's needed. Some masks need it, some don't. And then I'll put on ribbon ties or so on, elastic straps, and then it's ready to go. I work very hard to make them comfortable, and that is one of the hallmarks in my masks. And that is why a lot of the um, groups, theater groups, dance companies, come back again and again for my masks, because you can put them on and, and almost forget about them, is my goal anyway. And that is one of the nice things about the leather, is they tend to just breathe a little bit more than a synthetic mask. I could just make goat masks all day long, and I have a dream project that I need to do eventually where I want to do all the different breeds of goats, you know, because there's so many different kinds of goats and I would love to do a beautiful mask representational of each one. People who buy masks seem to enjoy goat masks. And then it's always fun to do something like a, a leopard or a mountain lion. You know, if it comes out good, that's the kind of mask where I'm like, ooh, look what I made, that's kind of pretty, you know, just like the animal is.